You'll find treasures more valuable than gold. Digging in the Word. Um, also, prophecy can occur in, in conversation, and sometimes the speaker is not even aware of it. Um, a good passage to look at would be John 11, 49-52. Caiaphas is plotting with the other uh, Jewish leaders how they can put Jesus to death. And then um, they, the other, other leaders were saying that if this continues, the, with, everybody will follow Jesus, and then the Romans will come and take away our place, their position of authority, and our nation. So uh, Caiaphas tells them, you know nothing at all, and don't consider that it is expedient that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation uh, does not perish. So John says that being the high priest that year, he prophesied that one man would die for the nation, and that not only for that nation, but all who would come to God through him. So Caiaphas was just talking. He was, he was doing something evil. He was trying to plot to put an innocent man to death, but while he was talking, he was the high priest, and while he was talking, um, he prophesied. So sometimes prophecy just comes out when uh, people's mouths, even someone who wasn't, wasn't right with God like Caiaphas, uh, and also uh, Balaam prophesied. We know that from the Old Testament. But it says in one of the passages that Balaam, when he saw the children of Israel, did not resort to soothsaying. He did not resort to divination like he normally did, but he prophesied by the Spirit of God. So we, we see that even uh, a wicked man like Balaam, who becomes a type of the false teacher who runs after money, uh, as we read in the book of Revelation, uh, the way of Balaam is a bad thing, uh, and also the book of Jude. You know, even that man could prophesy because God gave him words to speak. It doesn't. If someone prophesies right, that doesn't mean the person is righteous or holy. Consider also uh, consider Jesus' teachings in Matthew seven, where he says that there'll be false prophets among you, and that you'll know them by their fruits. And then, in, in, uh, at the end, people will come to the Lord and say, "Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name?" And in your name have cast out devils, and in your name have done many wonderful works. Well, um, you know, Jesus indicated that the sons of the Pharisees were casting out devils. If somebody casts out devils, Jesus calls that a miracle. No one can do a, a miracle in my name and then quickly speak evil of me. No one can do a sign in my name, he said. So, um, oh, there's a Greek word that can mean mir be translated miracle or sign. So, casting out demons is a miracle or a sign. But uh, if someone casts out demons in Jesus' name, it does, and they do it, that doesn't necessarily mean that person is, is going to be righteous if they do the will of the Father. So he, the same is true with prophesying. I mean, Balaam, if Balaam comes to the Lord at the end and he says, Oh Lord, I prophesied those wonderful prophecies about Israel. You know, Balaam, uh, that doesn't make Balaam righteous. Balaam later um, uh, shared with Israel's enemies, If you want to trip Israel up, here's what you do. Send some women in. Uh, to fornicate with the people, or with the men, and to tempt them into idolatry. And if they're idolaters, God will oppose them because they've broken covenant. So uh, Balaam used his spiritual knowledge for evil, even though he had the ability to hear God and to converse with God. So um, prophecy can occur in conversations, like with Caiaphas, and it can also, um, you know, prophecy can also be done by the wicked at times. So. Uh, we've got to be careful about that. If somebody reads your mail and that doesn't, uh, and they really prophesy what's right on, but their teaching is teaching you to do things that are contrary to the Word of God, then we don't want to follow a, a person like that. Um, there are some Old Testament tests for whether a prophecy is true or not. Uh, the most commonly quoted one, perhaps, is found in Deuteronomy, chapter 18, verses 14 through 22. Let's open up to Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 14 through 22. <clears throat> For these nations which you will dispossess, listen to sooth soothsayers, listened to soothsayers and diviners. But as for you, the Lord your God has not appointed such for you. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your midst, from your brethren. Him you shall hear, according to all your des you desired of the Lord your God in Hebron, Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, nor let me see his great fire any more, lest I die. What you have, what the, and the Lord said to me, What they have spoken is good. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brethren, and I will put my words in his, in his mouth, and he will speak to them all that I command him. And it shall be that whoever 
will not hear my words when he speaks in my name i will require him of him i will require it of him but the prophet who presume, presumes to speak a word in my name which i have not commanded him to speak or who speaks in the name of other gods that prophet shall die and if you say in your heart how shall we know the word which the lord has not spoken when a prophet speaks in the name of the lord if the thing does not happen or come to pass that is the thing which the lord has not spoken and the prophet has spoken it presumptuously you shall not be afraid of him okay so we see here that god is speaking to israel he says that he will raise up a prophet like unto moses it's also a messianic prophecy about jesus but um, there's an obligation on the people to hear the prophet that god raises up raises up and uh, if the peop if the prophet prophesies something that does not come to pass, then they know that he's he's not pro he's prophesying falsely. So that's a, a test. Does the sign does what he prophesies come to pass? Um, divination, you know, chopping open a goose liver and reading the filaments to predict the future, is not allowed. Um, reading the clouds is not allowed. All these type of things. That's not the Lord's way. But uh, the, pro the Lord's way for communicating to the people, according to this passage in the Old Testament, is that the Lord would raise up a prophet and give the prophet words to speak. So that's kosher, that's orthodox. Even if he predicts the future, I mean, it's in the Bible. This is this is something that the Lord has ordained. So um, do prophecies... The, so the question is, do the prophecies come to pass? If the prophecy comes to pass, then that, that can be um, evidence that the that that the prophet is someone that the Lord sent. Now, sometimes some uh, prophecy. One passage talks about a prophecy may come to pass, but then the prophet tells you to worship false gods. Still stolen that guy to death. So the Lord is testing you to see whether you want to follow him with all your heart. That's in the Old Testament as well. So, if a prophecy, if somebody is prophesying in the name of whoever, Baal or whatever, and the prophecy comes to pass, that does not mean that you follow him. And if he's prophesying in the name of the Lord, but he's teaching false doctrine, teaching you to turn away from the Lord, to worship idols or whatever, don't follow that person either. We still need to stick with the word of God. But the Lord can raise up prophets. <laughs> We've got the book. Dun, dun, dun.